And then she trusted. She trusted. She trusted that what God was doing would bring the greatest kind of joy. She would just, just let go. Let go of her plans, her questions, and... There we go. Just let the good shepherd carry you. Good shepherd carry me. <laughs> Today we start a new series called The Glory of Christmas. My question to you is what is glory? Glory is one of those words we use a lot, right? But if someone said, How, how do you define glory? I bet it would take you at least a few seconds to try to come up with some words to describe it. Now, let me give you a little bit of help. I'll read a Bible verse about glory that should settle it for you. Let's read from 2 Corinthians. For if the ministry of condemnation has glory, much more does the ministry of righteousness abound in glory. For indeed, what had glory in this case had no glory because of the glory that surpassed it. All right? So we're good? I'll just sit down. We'll go on with things. We know what glory is all about. Uh, I looked up some theologians and Christian authors. Paul Tripp says, the doctrine of God's glory encompasses the greatness, beauty, and perfection of all that he is. I think that's a, that's a pretty nice definition of glory, the, the beauty and the perfection and the greatness of all that he is. Um, <clears throat> John Piper has said, glory is an attempt to put into words what God is like in his magnificence and purity, it refers to his fullness of all that is good. Now, on June 8th, 1941, beloved author and theologian C.S. Lewis, he ascended the church in Oxford up to the pulpit, and he delivered in that moment one of the greatest sermons of the 20th century. And that sermon was called the weight of glory. And in that sermon, Lewis touches on all kinds of topics. It wasn't a 25-minute sermon like you're used to here at Knox. He talks about salvation, heaven, our moral and our spiritual responsibilities. But he hangs it all upon one word. It's the Hebrew word kavod. Kavod. Now, kavod is the Hebrew word for glory. But kavod can also mean something else. You see, at its root, the word kavod also means weight. Hence the title of his sermon, the weight or kavod of kavod. Now, it cannot be a coincidence that at the very same time, this one word can mean something almost spiritually undefinable and at the same time something materially mundane. Kavod is glory is almost impossible to fully describe. How do you describe the glory of God in human words? Poets use metaphors and similes and theologians wax poetic just to pass a passing glance upon the meaning of the word glory when it comes to God. And yet, if you've ever picked stones out of your garden or carried in six bags of groceries from the car to the kitchen, you understand the meaning of the word kavod as weight. But there's a different meaning to the word weight, isn't there? There's a, a spiritual or emotional meaning these days that I think we know all too well. To be weighed down, perhaps we could say, burdened. And at this time of year, there might be even a greater burden than at, than at other times of the year. Burden to pick the right gifts, or to balance the family budget, or to visit family that you'd probably just rather avoid, or to not be able to visit family that you wish with all your heart you could. Doesn't the world just seem 
heavy these days? Like, like since COVID, everything in the world, whether it's a war in Ukraine or a mass shooting in the United States or even labor disputes in our local schools, everything just feels heavier than it did three years ago. We carry such heavy burdens that I have to wonder what will be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Hopefully, hopefully that straw is not the weight of Christmas. Because it doesn't have to be. Because it should not be. Christmas, you see, friends, is not something that we're meant to get through. You often hear about it, we just, we need to get through the holidays. <laughs> it's not something that we are to get through. It is something that is meant to get us through. Let me explain. The problem with Christmas, in many ways, is not the season itself. The problem with Christmas is all the things that we add to it. And if we're not careful, an unnecessary and undesirable weight around Christmas expectations can begin to slump our shoulders and suffocate our soul. We may find ourselves feeling pressed to get everything done from shopping to decorating to making sure we have all our baked goods all ready to go or to see everybody in the family without offending anybody all while, while wearing ugly Christmas sweaters. There can be feelings of so much to do with not enough time or money <laughs> to get it all done. We can feel the weight of Christmas. And if that is our reality, then we are in danger of missing the true glory of Christmas. You see, the kavod of Christmas can keep us from understanding the kavod of Christmas. After all, the season of Advent means the season of expectant waiting. And what do we do? We celebrate it by lighting candles of, of love and joy and peace and hope. Meanwhile, we often experience anything but. And this is nothing new. Just go back to that first Christmas story, okay? How does the very first Christmas story start? It begins with an angel and a visit to a young girl who finds out some pretty big news. That the next nine months of her life are going to be very different. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. Now, I don't know about you, but if an angel showed up and started talking to me, I think I'd be pretty, pretty excited. I think I'd be pretty jazzed. Yeah. But she was greatly troubled. <laughs> So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I wouldn't be happy about it. I don't know. She tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. Translation, uh-oh. Why is he here? What does he want? Like when your mother calls you out of the blue. Like, uh-oh, what's, what's going on now? Well, don't be afraid, Mary. You found favor with God. You'll conceive. You'll give birth to a son. You're going to call him Jesus. He's going to be great. He's going to be the son of of, he's going to be called the son of the most high. The Lord God's going to give him a throne. The throne of his father, David. That great, that great throne that has been abandoned for so many decades will be reclaimed. He will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary, who's probably 14, 15, 16, she's, she's not old. That's for sure. And that's got to be some heavy news to bear. Like, I can't imagine being told I'd be the, the father of the Son of God. Especially since I think I'm the father to two little demons. <laughs> I'm kidding. Although my youngest did take the wax uh, snuffer outer and, and, and put wax all over the community table before church. So I might not be too far off. The question for Mary is how in the world is she going to carry this burden alone? 
She's a young girl. She's never been with a man. She's engaged to a man. That's not going to happen anymore. She must be thinking that. She doesn't have the benefit like we do of knowing how uh, it all ends. But Joseph himself being visited by an angel. Her friends and her family, they're never going to believe her. How's she going to get through this? How's she going to carry it alone? And I think, I suspect, that some of you may be thinking the very same thing this year. How am I going to get through this Christmas? It's just too heavy. Kavod. 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 Maybe it's the weight of glory that will get you through. Maybe it's the, the glory of Christmas that is not a burden, but is actually the thing upon which you stand that lifts you up. When I was a kid, my, we lived in Stovall. My grandmother lived in Orangeville. It was about an hour and a half drive from one direction to the other. And we went once a month to visit my grandmother on a Saturday, and often we would leave after dinner, and we would get home in the dark. And I remember how many times I would fall asleep in the back of my dad's Pontiac GTO as the darkness approached, only to be awakened briefly when we arrived home and the, the doors opened up and the lights came on in that old Pontiac. And my dad would reach in and he would scoop me up in his arms and he would carry me into the house, kind of throw off my boots and carry me upstairs and lay me in bed and pull a blanket over me. And to this day, at the age of 45, I still remember so clearly the feeling of being safe and protected and loved. I had complete, 100% trust in this man to pick me up and carry me through the darkness. I had absolutely no worries whatsoever. None. None. Because he was my dad. He was my father. And he loved me. Friends, that is what Christmas is supposed to be. The knowledge that God loves you. Just like my dad loved me. But infinitely more. And that he's launched a rescue plan in the baby, in the manger behind me. His name is Jesus. He will be the son of God. He will be called the most high. He will rule on the throne of David. Not a physical throne, but in the throne of the hearts of every person who calls him Lord and Savior. I've come to pick you up, he says, in a way you may not expect, but in the way you need. Now, I didn't grow up in a Christian home. And so, like... For me, Christmas wasn't about going to church at all. Except one year, I, I was forced to go to Sunday school when I think I was around seven. And, and I did go and be in a nativity place, so I have some idea of what that video is all about. I think I was a shepherd. Or a tree. One or the other. And, uh, and so my, my idea of Christmas had nothing to do with this Jesus stuff. It was all about presents and gifts and Santa and turkey and all that. Which, to this day, I still love all that stuff. And my wife, too, she didn't really grow up in a religious home. Her dad is a lapsed Catholic who, for some reason, took her to the United Church for Sunday school. Much like my parents, I guess they felt that she needed some religion and instead of turning out like a little demon like my kids. So, you know, for her, it wasn't about coming to church either. But later in life, she came to faith. And I, at the age of 16, came to faith. Christmas has changed for us. And a couple of years ago, I remember as we'd come home on a Christmas Eve and we'd put the kids to bed and they were sleeping soundly waiting for Santa to come and we were about to put on the Chevy Chase Christmas special. She looked at me and she said, you know, I feel like Christmas is already complete. Because we had sung the hymns, we'd read the scripture and we'd celebrated the coming of the Lord that night. And the glory of that Christmas Eve night, it was, it was now everything to us. 
and everything else just sort of faded away. That if we'd had nothing else but that hour in church, we would have had the best Christmas ever. And it's true. I get to stand here before 150 to 200 people every Christmas Eve, and I, and I get to proclaim the birth of Jesus. That is such a privilege and such a joy for me. Like, I can't describe to you how awesome it is to tell all these people that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, that the Savior has come on this glorious night. And when we stand there and we light the candles and we pass the peace of Christ from one to the other, and then we lift those candles high and we shout Merry Christmas, when the bell rings out into the Christmas Eve night, I mean, oh man, that's amazing. And there's, there's a sense of weight to all of that, right? A sense, a sense of heaviness, but not in a bad way, just a sense that the presence of God is with us and covers us and his glory is here and that's just weighty. And there's no burden to it. It's no load to carry. You see, the glory of God is that which carries you. Unlike every other burden that you have in your life, which weighs you down, this is the one that lifts you up. Like a father carries his son or his daughter home in the night. That God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And that son gave up eternity for us to be born. He gave up divinity. 33 years later, he gave up humanity. To be born and to die for our sins. <laughs> what a glorious night. The thing about Christmas is there's no obligation. There's no Zoom meeting. There's no price tag to Christmas. Anything else that we add to it, that's on us. In the video today, we found a woman who uh, had a couple kids in college, and she was a middle-aged former soccer mom, and, and she's about to have a little bundle of joy, and all that retirement plans, and all the money that she knew would soon be freed up to go on vacations, and would maybe renovate the house, or whatever it is, all those plans had kind of crumbled. And she plays Mary in the play, but she's no maiden, and this is going to be a challenging Christmas for her. And she's asking herself, how how am I going to get through this? And then she looks over, right? And I love that scene. She sees the shepherd lift that sheep up onto his shoulders. And he's like, don't worry, buddy, I've got you. She realizes that she needs to let go this Christmas and let the good shepherd carry her. And he does. And he will. Because Christmas is not something we're meant to get through. Christmas is meant to carry us through. So what is glory? Well, it turns out that glory is actually pretty easy to define after all. You see, glory is nothing less than a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Oh, what a glorious night. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. Lights, please. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night, and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Do, 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 do. 
That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown.